Welcome to Sisters in Laws TV. I'm your host, Erica and McAfee. In October is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month, a month dedicated to honoring and remembering our babies who have gone to heaven far too soon. I'm excited to present to you a series on surviving pregnancy loss. I know many of the stories you may hear may be triggering, so press pause, take a break, and come back to hear these powerful stories from sisters in loss who have survived pregnancy loss. Thank you all for joining us. Welcome to the series Surviving Pregnancy Loss. I'm your host, Erica M. McAfee. And today my special guest is my, my introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what you do. All right, Erica, thank you so much for this opportunity. I am so sorry, apologies, um, because I actually go by May. I should have oh, said that to you and everybody. Yeah. This is something that I normally forgot to tell people until it's too late. Uh, my name is May um, Asamoa. I am from Sierra Leone, West Africa. Um, I've been in America for quite a while. I did my high school years here and um, I'm into my mid-30s now. Um, <laughs> that's how old I am. But anyhow, I am a registered nurse. I've been a nurse for 11 years. I am a mother to two biological children. My son is 12. My daughter is 10. And I have two children that I would say in heaven. Um, one was um, eight weeks uh, miscarriage. And then most recent this March, um, five months and a couple of days. Um, when I had her, it was a stillbirth. Um, I am married. My husband is from Ghana, uh, also West Africa, but we met here. Um, we've been married now for four years, but we've been together for about eight. And I do have stepdaughters. I have um, four stepdaughters. So that's, I think that's about me. Yes. And you, yeah, you should have correct me. You don't, yeah, Sorry. I don't correct people. I know it's, yeah, that's what it is. It's okay <laughs> to say, then, then it's in my head, like, okay, that's, it's maze. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. No, you always correct people because you want to make sure that they understand how to pronounce your name correctly. And I don't want to mess up anybody's name. So I should apologize to me because I should have asked beforehand too. It's spelled that way. So please don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So take us back on your journey to motherhood and share with us about your losses. So my journey to a mother would have always wanted four children. That has been a joy. So back in 2018, um, I was pregnant, but within a couple of weeks, I was eight weeks pregnant. Before I know it, I lost the child. So that was hard, you know, the miscarriage and I tried to deal with it. So fast forward to 2020, um, I also found that I was pregnant, um, ending of 2019, and then everything was going good. Baby was perfect um, because I was already um, over 35. So I had to do um, genetic testings. We did everything and everything actually was perfect. You know, um, nothing was wrong. And uh, March, March 9th, I, my son actually was home that day. He wasn't feeling well, but I was scheduled for sonogram. So I'm like, okay, let's go to Sonogram. And after that, we can do grocery and then pick up your sister from school. And then we went there. And then while they were doing the exam, and the lady, look, lady looked at me and said, when last you saw your doctor? I was like, well, I'm at the stage where it's monthly. So I was supposed to see him that Friday because the, the appointment was on Monday, March 9th. And, um, and she said, I was like, my baby's dead. Just like that, it came out. I think I have that, you know, that feeling. And she looked at me and I'm like, she was, she didn't want to say, I said, I know I just felt it. And plus the monitor, she couldn't get a heart rate, um, no heartbeats, no nothing. So um, the doctor came in and he confirmed the child was dead just like that. Like my whole world just collapsed right in front of me, you know? Um, and for me, the, the, um, I didn't expect it, you know, I didn't have any signs. And the surprising part was like the baby has been dead for two weeks. She was actually dead for, they said like the estimation of um, 
death was like basically it's been two weeks there was no signs of life I'm like that's not possible because I was still feeling the baby kicking which later the doctor explained yes you know they have those phantom sensations um when um you will feel that but I have absolutely no signs I go to work I feel okay I come home um no nausea no vomiting nothing so for for me to get that news when everything was um perfect in a way it was just very very hard and also my son was premature he was um 37 and a half weeks and I had a lot of issues with him that one I knew I was going to the hospitals every Monday and Thursdays for like biophysical NST and all that and I'll be there for hours so I know what it feels like when something is not right and then when I had my daughter everything was perfect And then, so with this one, everything was perfect too. There was, I had no signs, no nothing. So that was very, very hard um, and devastating for um, for me to find out about that. And then um, right there, they decided I have to admit me so that they can induce and I can deliver. Um, because my son was emergency section, my daughter obviously was. So this one also was supposed to be, but The doctor was like, no, um, there's no point taking you through a surgery. Um, the baby's already dead. Let's just induce you and um, have you deliver virginally. And so they admitted me that day. They induced me. Um, so I was able to deliver her the next day, the Tuesday, the 10th, um, after hours of labor. So um, it was very hard because it's like that was my first time experiencing actually labor pains, you know, since the first two we have um, scheduled C-section. So um, we went through the whole process. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So what happened after you actually had her? Did you able, were you able to hold her, spend time with her? How did that process? I did. Once I delivered her, they gave her to me. I held her. Um, it was surprising that my son, who um, is 11 right now, he's be 12 in November, um, he held her too. He held her. Um, the interesting part, the moment she came out and um, the nurse said, did you want to hold? I said, of course. And then I started singing Trinkle, Trinkle, Little Star. I'm looking at her. I So up to today, those are the images I see um, because, you know, her eye, she had like her, her dad's eyelid, um, you know, her fingers, everything, the toes. And I was singing to her. And then, of course, we took a lot of pictures, um, crying, laughing, you know, and my daughter walked away. That was surprising because the whole time I was pregnant, she was so caring. She was so excited to have a baby sister. Um, she will like, I have a water bottle, the heater bottle. Like when I come home from work, she will say, mommy, put it in your back or put it in your stomach. She would Google stuff and say, oh, this is what I heard when you're pregnant. So she would do those things for me, you know? So I thought I was more concerned about her when we're at the hospital, when the social workers came and the, the kids um, social worker and I'm like I'm more concerned about my, my daughter but she acted so strong and brave but then when the baby was born was like do you want to hold her she was like no but then my son said yes so he held her deep on there for a minute and um then she was I think she was with me for about four hours before they took her to the hospital morgue because um we decided to do um an autopsy because everything was perfect all the tests they did the pathology every came back 100 perfect so it's like okay we can um do an autopsy so they came because then she started she started decaying more so they said okay we have to take her before it get to worse so they took her to the mall so what was the results of the autopsy were you able to find out that for future pregnancies Yes, nothing. They didn't find anything, nothing, no abnormalities. Um, her heart, her lungs, everything was good. Um, no abnormalities were found. So on the death certificate was that um, cause of death was unknown. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would love for you to share just how your healing journey has been. I mean, obviously this is, you know, six, almost six months later. Right. So how has your healing journey been in the midst of all this um, pandemic, racial unrest that we've been having? It's just so much has been happen happening around us while you're grieving. So share with us how you've been doing throughout this COVID-19 pandemic. 
that I think is one of the hardest part for me because um, that Monday that um, it happened, that same Thursday when I was, because I was in the hospital for about four days, um, that was when they shut down everything, the kids' school, the county. So I could not have, even before the Thursday, they were already limiting visitors. So it was less of um, people coming. And um, I'm a very involved person in my church and my community. So to not have all those people around was very, very devastating. Um, I had planned uh, um, a funeral, a memorial service for her at our church for the 20th, which will be the following um, Friday. But that one too, I wasn't able to do because they shut down everything. So we did, um, we buried her uh, because she was at the funeral home and then they took her to the graveside. It was only about maybe 15 people that showed up at the the graveside. So we did a memorial service. Um, But through that, I have been praying because of my mom is a pastor. So I'm very strong in faith. Um, Just praying, praying, seeking God. And then when I was having a midnight prayer, because normally I pray for like 12 to 3 a.m. or something. And then God said, I want you to open um, a ministry, a nonprofit to help women that have gone through miscarriages, their birth, um, called it Ray of Hope like rainbow, you know? So I prayed about it. Then I contacted my um, assistant pastor at church. I said, this is the vision that I had. I said, but I don't know, I'm going to do this. He was like, if God give it to you, he's going to provide, he's going to, you know, just keep praying and keep asking. And I keep praying and I keep asking. And I told my mom, I told my sister, my brother, you know, and my husband and, you know, everybody just said pray. And so I was able more to focus on that because then I started reading a lot, you know, a lot of books. that's even how I came in contact with Sisters in Loss um, when I joined. Um, it was um, one of my pastors that had died um, two years ago. His wife also is part of Sisters in Loss. So she sent me the thing to join. Yes, um, her name is Nova. Um, so she sent me your, your information. So I, I joined and then I saw where you're doing the doula thing. So I joined the doula class. We just finished last week. I'm trying to get my finish doing the book record and all that stuff. Um, because I wanted, because I, when you, when I saw that, that you were doing the classes, I'm like, okay, this will help, um, in the ministry that I'm opening up. Um, you know, if I have the bereavement, birth and bereavement doula certification, because then I'll be able to help women through that. Because when I was doing, when I was delivering the baby, it was just, um, I felt there was no much empathy or even sympathy. It was just like, oh, push, push, push. But I felt empty. I felt alone. So I wanted to be there for women um, that give them that extra support that I have been there. I know how this feel because even though my mom was in the room, my husband was in the room, it was still not, you know, there was something missing. Like I was just laying there and said, you guys have no idea. All you're saying is push, like seriously, you know, so. So I, in addition to working, you know, studying the foundation, I also doing, you know, the class so that we, and then reading books and then doing more researches. Um, So that's how I've been healing. So when the focus is not even on me or my grief, it's just how I can do this to help people. Um, It has been nothing but a blessing. You know, sometimes I even feel guilty. Like, I don't feel like I am sad or mourning the way I should. I know I miss my daughter. I know I wish she would have been here. I know um, I could have given anything for her to be here, but just um, doing this ministry um, that got laid in my heart, um, helping other women, um, brought me so much peace. Um, I collaborated with the hospital that um, I delivered, I know Loudon, but Loudon, as you know now, living in the area, is all over. So Fairfax um, Hospital, Loudon Hospital, um, Fair Oaks Hospital. Um, so giving them a gift basket, you know, that's what was um, in my heart. You know, not just being there as a support, but also bring, you know, bringing them something. So I have a big gift basket that I call the Hope Basket that I, I deliver to the hospitals. Um, that when a woman is going through um, or just had a stillbirth or miscarriage, they can give her that. You know, just all this thing. There's a Bible, one of the books I am reading, a pain and a resource for um, how to contact me if they need more help. Um, I'm also, I did a certification on life coach. So I'm now certified master life coach. So that way um, I'm able to also just give them the counseling counseling parts because, you know, being a nurse is one thing, but then also having that extra background. So 
you know, I think I just want to equip myself more that we um hundred percent or not even if not even hundred percent, but more knowledgeable about the services that I'm that I'm offering out there. You know, so that's how I've been coping. I actually had my first Zoom meeting. I'm also getting gathering women. Um, where we talked about our losses, because um, one thing I found out, because I'm very outspoken, so I talked about my loss and my experience and what I was going through on Facebook. A lot of people also reach out to me um, about telling me inboxing media stories. So a few of those people, I asked them if they want to you know, talk about it. So we had a panel, um, the September 28th, on 29th was the first um panel we did, it was excellent. It came out well. We had four women talk about their grief, their loss, and um, so that's that's how I've been coping. And yes, no, I love it. And you, you're not the only one. You know, I thought that um, another girl um, who is also a part of the doula training, she took the training before you, mm-hmm. also experienced the loss in March, right before shutdown. It's so wow. similar how crazy you both of y'all stories are. I'm gonna have to link you all together in a Facebook group in our Facebook, our private Facebook group, mm-hmm. but. Same thing. She saw the training, hopped on it, and really has turned her pain into purpose. The same as you with this work. You know, I feel like um, God you know, definitely um, equips those who are called. And both of you all were called, even it's, even with this tragic situation. You know, loss is not easy for anyone. It's hard enough to get up in the morning, put your pants legs on one by one, and then take up one step in front of the other. But to be able to give back in the way uh, by being a birth and bereavement doula is a blessing. And I'm so happy that this nonprofit is birthed from your pain. Um, I know that God is going to bless it, um, especially since you really stepped out on faith and have taken the certifications, not only for this, but for life coaching as well. Girl, you are going to bless so many people. Um, (laughs) I'm just so um, impressed and so um, honored that you all chose me to to do your training through. So thank you so much. Mm. Um, I would love for you to share a little bit about your experience with the training. How how was it? How has it been? You know, what are you looking forward to with your coaching clients? Share with us about it. Oh, I love it. I, I, I did, I did not regret it. It was, it was worth it. I've actually studied, um, people that have reached out to me on inbox. I've already started talking to them about joining at least sisters in laws and then think about the doula and see if they want to join. Um, I, you are so, and not just because you're here interviewing me, but what you've done, thank you. Because even though, yes, God gave me the vision to open the ministry, but without joining your group, the support, and without your class, I don't think um, my mind, the way my mind is open now, I'm more, um, have so much information, very informative. Um, the videos we have to watch, you know, even the statistics of Black women, I didn't know all those things. It was through your class. So I really, really thank you for that. You know, it's just... It takes a special person to do those kind of things, you know, Um, so thank you. But it has been very great and I can't wait to um, to use them. You know, for me, it wasn't when I joined that or did the life coaching, it wasn't as a business to make money out of it. It is part of the nonprofit. Um, That is why even the assignments you gave to do the contract, um, I don't know if you've watched all, because I know it's a lot of students, you have to grade all of it, but mine was you know, the name of my company is The Ray of Hope, which is the same of my non, um, non-profit because it's, I'm using it towards that, you know, and it's a 501c3, non, you know, so um, people want to donate, that's fine, but that's what I'm going to be using it towards, just towards um, helping the women, um, reaching out to them and giving them support um, for free. But that's... Um, and I think you did say we can retake those classes if we want to. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Retake the classes. Yes. It's all about continuous learning. So right. um, for those of you who are listening or watching, yes, there is, you know, we go into a little bit more detail about um, branding your business around a nonprofit and how to do that. So I'm so happy that you definitely want to do the business portion, but then talk about, 
you know, how you're going to make this a nonprofit work and give back to women in this way. I think that that is so key in getting that formalized structure and clarity that you have been given. Um, so it's good. And it's good to network with all these other women, amazing women who are doing this work. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> so how are these next six months going to look like for you as you get back? You know, we are in, we're recording this in September. This is going to go live in October during Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. It's the month that we celebrate and honor our babies who have gone to heaven far too soon. Mm -hmm. I would love to know how you are going to, or plan to memorialize um, your losses, both of your losses um, during the month of October. And then once you get to that year mark, back next March with um, your most recent loss with your baby girl? Yes. Um, I haven't even thought of it, to be honest, um, because I am taking one day at a time. Um, one of the things I'm doing is the Zoom. Um, so I'm doing that every other month. So the next one would be um, October. I've already had my guest. Um, that is part of, cause I feel like doing that also is part of, you know, bringing her, you know, thinking about her, um, and just keeping her active too, you know? So, um, I'm not sure yet, maybe by the next time, next month, then I'll figure something out. Um, because things just like, I, I am a dreamer. Um, that's one thing that God, the, the gift that God gives me. Some of the things that um, I do is because of the dream that I, the things that I see in my dream. So I will write them down. And even like the logo for my ministry just it appeared to me in a dream exactly the way it was, the color. People was like, why you have a uh, navy blue and an orange? Because that was the color that came to me. So I try not to plan too much ahead and just see whatever happened and whatever God laid in my heart to do. That's not what I would do. Yesterday I did because yesterday was exactly a month, um, six months, the ninth, when I found out she was dead. Um, so I did just made a little pause and I posted some of like um, the things that I um, got from the hospital, like the the bracelets, the fingerprints, you know, the arm, the footprint. You know, because I've never I never posted that before. It was something I kept, but it was just a way of saying happy heavenly birthday, you know. And so, and I at the end of my post, I said this is not this is a celebratory post. Um, so. It's, I'm celebrating and be happy. You know, some people comments was like, I know you're celebrating so many good things have come out of it, but still it's sad RIP. I'm like, hey, if you want to say so, it's real. I'm hurting. I'm human. Um, but um, I, I look at the positive more and um, I do also have a counselor um, talking about the way I cope that I um, check in with every six weeks. You know, I just talk to her. Um, she's a Christian um, counselor that, you know, we talk based on biblical principles and healthy grieving um, and healing. So um, I do that, too, for my mental check as well. Yeah. Absolutely. And I love that you um, definitely have a counselor that you talk to because we all definitely need to stay in some kind of therapy as we go throughout our grief journey. And I've been in and out of therapy for the last, you know, eight, nine years since I've lost my son. So I understand um, the importance of having a therapist that you trust. And that's Christian <laughs> that can help you through what you're going through. Mm -hmm. So how are you surviving pregnancy loss? You mentioned it a little bit before, but really, how are you surviving? By just focusing on helping others. I don't dismiss, you know, I'm a um, hospice nurse currently for the past two years. I was talking to my um, my chaplain. He called once he do like a check-in calls. He's like, how are you doing? I see you doing all these things. Are you taking care of yourself? I said, trust me, I am. Um, I do have those days that your tears just, you know, start rolling down my eyes. And I do cry and then I pray. But I think um, people ask me how I do it. It's not me, it's God. Um, it's God because I don't know how I do it. My heart, I do miss my daughter. I do cry. I do wish she was here. But I don't have any of those negative effects of like the depression, the mental anguish. You know, I think probably with God and with support with loved ones around me. And because I focus so much and praying and praying, I don't really. So I was telling my the guy, I was um, the chaplain for my job. I'm like, 
I really, should I feel bad that I'm not sad that way? He was like, no, he was, but he was like, don't keep it in. I said, I am not keeping it in. I am doing, when I tell people I'm doing good, that is because that's the God honest truth. Um, for some reason, um, God graced me with a gift of, um, I don't know, like people, I'm strong. Um, and it's not, I don't even know how to express it, you know, but it is not, I don't want to say not bad, not terrible, because I know it's painful, but I will feel like the worst one minute. And I have, God has given me the grace to just pray. And sometimes I do take communion. Like if I feel like my heart's that racing, I will take, I have a whole communion at home. I'll give, I'll pray on it and I'll drink it. And that actually works. I have anointing oil. I put in my head, I put in my chest. I say, God, then I also have like sticky notes of scriptures all over my bed and my bathroom is there. So I will look at those scriptures and I will recite them. And that has been excellent for me. Um, not that that works for everybody, but for me, I have seen so much I'm able to function. Even when I returned back to work, when I called my boss, I said, I want to come back to work. She said, no, it's too early. I'm like, but I'm fine. And it's like, well, your, your doctor has to send another one, you know, another form, you know. I said, I called the doctor and the doctor was like, are you sure you can still stay home? I said, no, actually staying home, making it worse. Let me go out. And I think that also helped because I know when I'm at work, at least every day somebody died because I'm a hospice nurse, right? And I go, I talk to the family, I provide support, you know, I pronounce the body, call the funeral home. Um, I think that also gives me um, like a little bit of, what do I want to say, um, extra edge of protection because it's something that I do daily and death, I see death every day, like literally every day. There's not a day that a patient didn't die. Like every day somebody's dying. And so I've done that for three years before this happened to me. So there was some kind of a subconscious, I guess, pushing of protection where I'm able to deal with it differently because I have always been the one talking to the family members, consoling them, you know, their spouses. And I think subconsciously I'm using that same technique on myself that I don't even know I'm doing it because it's like, and then with God and prayer and everything else, you know, because even my patients, like when I go back to work with their spouses, they'd be like, how are you doing this? Like, you just buried your child. Like, and you're here, like, how? It was like, I said, I, I can't tell you, it's only God, you know? Yeah, but I am, um, I do have my moment, but I, I am generally I'm doing well. Wow, I did not know that you're a hospice nurse. Now, that makes sense. That that brings you all the way full full circle. Excuse, excuse me, full circle on what you do in your day job to now experience your own loss and then wanting to give back in this way. I mean, I think that this was nothing but God for for bringing you to sisters in loss and then definitely for you to take the birth and bereavement training and form this nonprofit because. You already have the skill set from being a hospice nurse. And then now you get to go out and affect people and change in this manner. So um, nothing but God. Glory to God for um, your friend sending you to Sisters in Loss because um, it is definitely going to impact nations for what you're going to be doing. Thank you. Yeah she, yeah, she said, she said, I think this will benefit you. And, you know, the moment she sent it to me, something in me just, I didn't even hesitate. You know, sometimes people would think twice. I'm like, then I just, you know, send my stuff and then you approved it. I was like, you know, and everything just boom, boom, boom. And it's like, and, you know, it's just amazing. I think God knows what he's doing. He you does. Know, he you know, does. He definitely does. And everything lined up the way it lined up during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I realized on just my own reflection during the pandemic is that, you know, sometimes we need situations like this for us to really, um, for those things, those seeds that are planted to be birthed in us so they can bear fruit. Right. And um, I feel like if I did not have this pandemic, I would have been sitting on this training for another year when God had told me to birth this a year ago. Wow. And 
I had already had everything together. It was just me being scared to launch it. <laughs> so, okay, you wow, amazing. So, like, it's just like, God, like, you've been planting this seed in me for these last three years that I've been doing this work. Mm-hmm. You know, he was like, Erica, it's go time. Like, you need to go and launch, and I'm going to bless it. But if you don't go, you're not, I'm not giving you, I'm not, you're not going to have anything to bless. Right. You know, mm-hmm. he's not going to give you, you no, know, I'm, I'm not going to have anything for you to bless unless you actually go. And cause I was just like, ain't nobody going to sign up for this. Do people really want to do this training? <laughs> he has mm-hmm. blown my mind, blown my mind. Mm-hmm. So I am um, truly honored and grateful that you um, took the training, but also you have been willing to share your story in the Surviving Pregnancy Loss series. So where can um, our listeners, as well as those who are viewing, connect with you after this goes live? Um, They can go to www.ray, it's R-A-I, just like in rainbow, rayofhope.com, or Ray of www.rayofhope at gmail.com. Um, well, my Gmail, but then also .com. And I'm also on YouTube, Ray of Hope Ministry. Um, and so they can reach out. I did upload um, my launching video I, because I um, she was supposed to be born um, July 27th. So that was when I launched the ministry on the day that she was, you know, and turning, like you said, God used what the devil the enemy plan for evil got turning to good. I said, okay, this was the day I was supposed to celebrate. Um, and then now the child, the child is there. The best thing to do launch it the day she was supposed to be born. So that day was a celebration day. And it was so interesting when I was doing the videos to launch a rainbow appear in my house. This is how God, because, you know, as human beings, you have all this, you've prayed, you've fasted, but sometimes, you know, like you said, you have that hesitation, right? I'm like, God, is this really you? It was my daughter. She said, mom, there's a rainbow in the house. Like I had to redo the video because we stopped. I was like falling, you know, but that was just confirming, you know, like he made a promise. He is there. You know what I mean? And that was, he gave me that name, Ray of Hope. I was like, so because we were shooting at that moment, so we we captured the rainbow. I sent it to my mom, my sister, my board members. You know, I was like, "Look, this is God confirming it." You know, it was it was awesome. But yes, but things have to happen. Um, like you were saying, like the COVID happened. That's you able to launch this. You know, what I'm saying whatever was birth in me because I I did nursing for what nine years before I end and um, end up into hospice. I, I was a director of nursing, assistant director of nursing. I've worked in the I've worked in a hospital, nursing home. I've done it all. There was never that peace. Mm-hmm. Until I started doing, it was this hospice nurse that used to come where I was doing, um, I was a director of nursing. She said, I think you'd be great hospice nurse. I think you'd be great, you know. And so finally I said, and then the schedule works for my children. I was like, okay, let me do it. And then I did it. And I'm like, no, that's it. I found my, you know, so that was already in me. So when this happened, I'm like, hmm. God, you do have a funny sense of humor. Of course, you didn't want the child to die, but you knew whatever you've put in me was going to be birth, you know, because it came so naturally. When even my patients or workers and everything, my family co-workers, I was like, you would think I've been doing hospice for the whole 11 years, you know, just how natural it came. So this is all, and I look back, I was like, God, you're funny, you know, like, seriously, but you didn't have to kill my child, you know what I mean? But something had to happen, you know? But yes, yeah, so it's Ray of Hope um, at gmail.com or um, yes, and Ray of Hope dot org if you want to um, go to the website and just see more about me and then what the things we're doing. And um, because um, I have also connected with the people back home in Sierra Leone. Um, I've had three cases right now, actually, where I've helped them find a doctor because, you know, Africa um, is very hard getting them the help, um, the good care um, that they need. So somebody that saw my launching video in Maryland have an orphanage. 
um, that one of the ladies that actually doing the orphanage um, had a stillbirth actually. So she contacted me um, through Facebook and then able to help. And then I had my cousin back, my um, distance cousin back home that we were able to have her come to the city and then seek medical help and then provide some food for her. And she's back to the village and I do call and check on her. And then so the other two ladies um, that, you know, we unfortunately this happened to them so i'm um, like when i got the call from africa actually my first client came from africa i was like oh my god it was like i launched on that sunday and that tuesday the call came i was like oh my god yeah before i even started donating to the hospital the baskets so the hospital all i do is give them the baskets and put my information there if they want to reach out and i pray they do reach out if not at least i still send them something they know somebody cares and then once i complete all my requirements for the certifications for the doula program then I will tell them now that I have um, communication with them saying, hey, whenever you have a woman that is about to deliver, I can come there as a free, you know, you tell them and um, I can be there as a free extra support for them during that time that they have to deliver. And I've already reached out to my OBGYN. He said, yes, bring your brochures. So I went and I brought some of my brochures. Um, so, yeah. Yes, I'm so excited for you. And then obviously we're close and local. So I definitely will connect with you at some point once all this settles down. So Definitely. thank you yeah. so much, May, for um, sharing your light on us and sharing your story and your journey with us. It's been a blessing. Thank you so much, Erica. And thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for Sisters-in-Laws. Thank you for the doula program. Trust me, you are making a difference. You, I have learned so much. Um, within those six weeks that I think I'm like, I'm looking at those videos and I'm crying and I'm like, no, we have to do something. And thank you for bringing the light to that. You know, this has been, um, it was, it has been a great experience. And even us talking like this, you know, having women talk about their surviving their pregnancy loss and the different videos that you do and interviews. I, I do listen to the podcast, um, the ones that you share, not all of them, but some of them. And it's, it's awesome that you're doing that. You know, you bring in a lot of healing to people and thank you for doing that. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. You are welcome. All right. We got you down.